Three, two, one. Here we are at the international headquarters of the McNeil Film Studios. And today we're going to talk about revenues to a price taker. Now a price taker, you'll recall, is a firm that operates in an industry or a market characterized by pure competition. And the characteristics of pure competition are, you'll recall, A, many small sellers. Now many and small is qualitative, not quantitative. That's why there is a test. What's the test of numerousness and smallness? And the test is that no one firm has any influence or any ability to influence the market price, the price in the market that they sell in, because they are so small relative to the market that they have no influence. There may be uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of other sellers selling exactly the same thing they do that are perfect substitutes for uh, what this firm is selling. So, they cannot affect the market. They must accept the price that the market brings them. The second characteristic is that entry and exit are, just like Larry Miller says, free. There are no barriers. Firms can get in or exit if they please. And the third is the product is homogeneous. It's a homogeneous product that one firm sells exactly the same thing as another. It's not differentiated. It's not advertised. Examples of uh, price taker markets might be uh, agricultural markets. Uh, there are thousands or hundreds of thousands of different sellers of wheat in the wheat market. Uh, there's, there are no significant barriers to entry or exit, and the wheat from one seller is exactly the same as the wheat from another seller. So those are the characteristics. Now, when we look at a price taker's demand um, revenue curves, we're going we're to find out what is the price taker's demand curve, marginal revenue, and total revenue curves. And so, it's fairly straightforward that once the price is established in the market, this is the supply and that's the demand for all buyers and all sellers of wheat, we'll say, in this market. And this quantity is established at Q1, but it's enormous compared to the output of any given firm. So once the price is established at $5 per bushel, we'll say, this firm has the choice to sell zero units, one, two, three, four, five, as many as it wants to or is capable of producing at the market price of five dollars per bushel. So this then is the demand curve for a price taker firm. They can sell all they're capable of producing at the market price. If they raise their price even one penny, they will sell zero it's assumed that they will not lower their price below $5 because they can sell all they're capable of producing at the $5 level. The $5 and one price, nobody would buy it at $5.01 because they can go into this market and buy all they want at $5. So that's why the market price is $5. Now, um, to figure out what is total revenue, well, Total revenue, you'll recall, is price times quantity. So, when the firm sells one unit at $5, this area here, this area represents the total revenue when they sell one unit. It's five units high and uh, $5 high and one unit wide. When they sell two units, their total revenue is two times five. When they sell three, it's three times five, etc. So, the total revenue increases by exactly $5 every time they produce and sell one more unit. So, if we graph the total revenue curve um, on this diagram here, then when the firm sells zero units, its total revenue is zero. When it sells one unit, total revenue is five. When it sells two units, the total revenue is ten. When it sells three, total revenue is fifteen. When it sells four, total revenue is 20. Now, I would guess that at this point, you can see the pattern emerging. The pattern is that every time they sell one additional unit, their total revenue goes up by $5. So the slope of this thing, first of all, it's linear. 
and second, the slope of it is 5, which is equal to the price. So when the price is determined to be 5 in the market, that's the firm's demand curve, and that's the slope of a linear total revenue curve for that firm as well. Now the last little bit to deal with, of course, is marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is equal to the change in total revenue divided by the change in the quantity produced and sold. So in words, this is the formula, but in words it's saying because you produced and sold one more unit, what happened to your total revenue? And the answer, of course, is to a price taker, in this case, when the price is $5, every time they produce and sell one more unit, their total revenue goes up by $5. So this is not only the demand curve for the firm, but every time they sell an additional unit, their total revenue increases by $5. So this is also the marginal revenue to a price taker. So demand, a price, and marginal revenue are all the same to a price taker, and the total revenue is a straight line, the slope of which is the price. Now, one last little bit, and that is, in the market, in the market, this price changes every day according to supply and demand changes. So what if the price goes to $6? Well, if the price is $6, this now becomes the new demand and marginal revenue curve to this firm. And what about the uh, total revenue? It starts at zero, but now has a slope of $6 instead of 5 So that's demand, marginal revenue, and total revenue to a price taker out.